Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Proud to be Pagan. Today we're going to be talking about the uh, ritual path of paganism, or in guys' wisdom we call it the blue path of witchcraft. Uh, basically, I'm going to be going over some stuff you may already know. The elements and the corners and directions, how to actually cast a circle, and uh, just how to run a ritual. So, let's do it! Most rituals you're going to start with the north. And here, there it is, is our insignia for the north. As you can see there, the uh, we like call the upside down triangle with the line inside, that is north. And moving on here to the east. And it is the upright triangle with the line in the center. And as you can see there, the um, sword, the uh, athame, and the sylph. <laughs> to the south, we have fire, and that is the upright triangle. And that is the uh, rod, or the wand. And, of course, the salamander there. This is our west corner, water. And you can see here, upside down triangle, nothing in the middle. And our uh, undine, or lay, you know, in layman's terms, basically a mermaid, and our chalice as you can see there. So just remember that. That's are right, those are your corners. So now if you get your corners established, um, you know, you've found out which way north, south, east, and west are, you can start the ritual. Now the best way, if you don't know where north is, if it's at night, find the north star. If you can't find the north star, then I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> or at nightfall you can um, wait to see where the sun set at if you remember where it set at and that's the west. Or you can get one of these nifty little gadgets right here for about 80 cents at your local Wally World tools. What tools are used for a normal ritual? And like I said, I know we've gone over rituals before, but this is the intro to being the ritual list and things you have to know in order in succession to do your ritual. So like I said, you've established where north, south, east, and west are and where your center of the circle is going to be. Great. Step one complete. Step two, what tools are we going to use? Now, as I showed you those things at the top, those paintings, um, they have the altar tools. So, uh, like we said before, for whatever you're doing, you want to have all four elements present. So, pick one from each. Um, so, since all we have, all I teach the basics here is pentacle for earth. There's much more for earth than, than just pentacles, but get your pentacle and uh, use that. There's north. Um, south, a candle. East, a feather. And west, your chalice or a couple. Once you have your physical, once you have your elemental, and you have your circle, it's time to cast a circle. Let's do that. What you should have at every meeting, if you're in a coven especially, or every ritual, is are two things that you should mainly have if you can't have anything else. Your athame, your personal athame, and your personal wand. Why? Because without these two things, you can't cast a circle properly. I can't say proper, really properly because there are many ways to cast a circle. And you can cast with your hands. But if you are, the, you know, we be more ritualistic and you are more down to the letter and this is how it's supposed to do, traditionally, there you go. Now, the reasons. I'll go through it first. The wand, this is where your intent is going. This is how you're going to... Uh, cast your circle after the corner's been called or before the corner's been called, depending on how you're doing it. The easiest way to do it is to uh, cast your circle first, circle protection, then call your corners, then seal a circle. Or you can just cast a circle once, call the corners, and you're good. But you still need this to do it. Your athame is for your ethereal cutting. Um, primary so focus your energy, this is directing your energy. Simple enough. Take in the energy, send it out. Good to go. All right, so with that being said, let's see how we're going to do the ritual. I'm going to stand here at Akasha. You got my head's going to be missing for a while, but you can see what's going on. All right, now we say we're going to start at north. Very simply, all right? If you're doing a pre circle, like I was saying, doing cast on a circle first, you're going to bless the circle, which means basically just pouring salt in the circle 
around where everyone's going to be standing, the working area, whatever it is. We're going to start up north. Always start up north. We can point straight and we can move the circle and come back. Do it three times. We can point at the ground. See, this is the second time. So I'm actually casting a circle as I'm filming this. So, yay. Or we can cast straight up to the god and goddess, however it is, you're showing them that you're casting this circle. Speaking a lot louder because I'm not sure how the microphone's gonna work. Three, it's cast around three times. That's the biggest thing. Start whatever element you're starting at and cast a circle three times. Thrice about. Always start at the element you started at first, and then basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna welcome that element in. Saying, uh, hail. Anyway you can hail. Hail the Guardians, the Watchtower of the whatever, or you know, just hail and welcome, or just welcome to the circle, oh blessed, however you want to say it. Just make sure you actually welcome them, hail them, and say, you know, yeah, come on in. It's, it's a good day to be in a circle. Um, and then you do that individually. Actually, I don't think I'm a fully cast. I don't need the elements to show you. But that's how you do it. And after you're done with that, you can bless it, you know, blessed be to them, make amen, however you want to do it. Just make sure they know they're welcome because the elementals will know. Anyway, then go to east, south, and west. Always cast your circle diosol, which is clockwise. As we said before, diosol clockwise and the Widdershins counterclockwise. After you have done that, you have a circle cast, an ethereal circle of energy. The question is, can you leave it at any time? I mean, is it right? Yes, it is. That is where this comes into play. The high priest, high priestess, or the ritualist, whoever's doing the ritual leading it, will use their athame and cut a hole. Now, again, depending on where you entered, you may cut a hole exactly where they entered. You may enter in a line. But since, like I said, my door is right here, you're going to literally cut a hole. Start at the ground, go up, a door, and down. When someone leaves a circle, for any, you know, they have to go to the bathroom. They have to um, do whatever. They're hungry. I don't know. Um, and a tie, like a, um, a little umbilical cord is attached to this person. They're still protected by the circle of power and protection because they left through the hole and were blessed by the circle. And once they come back in, are cleansed and absolved and all that good stuff. Basically, they're protected the entire time. Just imagine that when you leave a circle, you've got the umbilical cord. But once that circle, you have to be in the circle. You have to be in the circle when it's cast and get your umbilical cord. Now let's get down from dangerous angle and continue. To dismiss the circle and dismiss your quarters is very simple. Just start at whatever you started at before. Because it comes full circle, it goes full circle. Uh, so we're going to start north, and you say, you bless them for coming, you thank them for coming, and you dismiss them. And, you know, go in peace and love, perfect love, perfect trust, however you want to say it, just tell them to go nicely. And then you'll go Wittershins, like I said, so you're going to go counterclockwise. Now, after that's done, you're going to have to actually dismiss the physical circle. Now, this comes where you're going to cut that hole again, if you haven't already for people that left. They exit and you sweep. I mean, that's pretty much how it works after they're dismissed and everyone's left the circle. You can do a lot of things. Uh, the physical act of cleaning up actually dismisses the circle. Um, that's why we use a broom. So if you use salt on the floor, vacuum or sweep, and you've cleaned up the circle. The circle itself, when you first cast it, is just a line of protection dividing you from the mundane world in your ritual. Once you call the quarters is when the actual magical protection starts. You need all the elements to do any kind of work. So after you've dismissed quarters, after you have got rid of your purifying essence, all you have to do is clean up. And that's it. If you want to do it Ritualistically, clean up Wittershins. That's all it is. All you rituals out there, all you blue craft, take all his words. Hopefully um, you already know some of this and hopefully maybe there's something you uh, learned and if I left anything out or you feel I did anything wrong, comment below. So everyone does a little different, but you keep up what you're doing and we'll see you next time on Proud Repay. Blessed be.